My name's Malan and in this video I wanted to talk about fear. So fear is of course a human emotion and it's kind of worrying about things that could happen in the future or kind of something that's designed to keep us safe, you know, in the back in the kind of caveman kind of times, you know, if you suddenly got a fright from a tiger or you saw like some sort of animal or say, let's continue with the example of a tiger, uh, eat one of your fellow tribesmen or something and then you ran away in fear, your mind would kind of remember this this feeling and then in the future it would be wary and fearful of things kind of happening and wary of that danger or that possibility of danger that could lead to death. So what happens now when we're in much safer kind of modern times? We don't have quite as much of a risk of death, you know, even there's lots of cars moving and if you just kind of cross the road without thinking, you'd be hit, but it's kind of common sense, you know, look before you cross the road and that. So generally we're quite safer. As a child, I experienced quite a lot of fear. I was very kind of scared and quite sensitive. And I had a lot of trouble, especially with the dark and I hated going to bed and I hated being in the dark. You know, I had to sleep with some sort of a light on so that I could see things because I was always worried and scared that there was just this sense of feeling like there was something going to come after me, that there was something hiding in the room. And I just wanted to always see and know if there was anything in there. And I never felt safe like by myself or without a light. And this is kind of embarrassing, but I kind of, that's kind of continued on until I was about 14. I think maybe 15 when I actually stopped and I just kind of got over it somehow and just general and kind of, you know, got used more used to it. And I think where this came from for me was kind of having an unstable home. You know, there was no kind of foundation, no solid ground, nothing that kind of made me feel grounded and safe. You know, my, you know, my childhood was pretty good. You know, I was quite lucky with a lot of things that I got. But basically with how I was treated and how the dynamics in my family was, I never felt fully safe or like I could rely on my parents fully, you know, like one minute they'd be really nice and then the next is kind of like they didn't want to talk to me, they didn't want to see me and that kind of thing. And that's hard for a kid and you don't really realise as a kid because when you're so young, you don't realise these sorts of things. So I had this instability and always this fear kind of following me around and you know, it always felt like the ground could shift underneath me at any moment. And this also kind of impacted my social kind of life as well, because I was kind of sensitive and I didn't, I was much more introverted. I, I felt safer just in my, doing, in my own space, doing my thing. And, you know, that led to me not talking to people as much, not having as much social skills and because I didn't have much social skills and I felt such fear towards it, it kind of reinforced this belief that more and more that I was someone that would keep to myself. And although I do prefer, you know, to be by myself, you know, it is important to have these social aspects and not let fear and like this anxiety kind of get in my way of life. And so this carried on um, around the same time that I stopped fearing the dark, you know, instead that started to tur turn to women and relationships, which I've talked about before, like my problems with sexuality and that kind of thing. And, you know, there was like this kind of feeling that I couldn't feel secure or confident in myself because I had this unstable ground, you know, and it just felt like the ground could shift under my feet at any moment. And I was so scared to open up to someone because, especially as a guy, you know, we find it hard to open up and be kind of honest and talk about our feelings because that's never we've never been taught how to do that and there's kind of like this big stigma around it and it's something that's kind of hard to overcome and this kind of got reinforced because you know since i was fearful of it you know i would only get close to women so far you know as soon as some of them showed too much interest in me i would just shut off and cut them off i wouldn't be able to do anything more i wouldn't be able to you know, escalate it anymore, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. And, you know, as I talked about in my Let's Talk About Penises video, you know, I have a penis that's on the smaller side. 
So that also kind of fed this insecurity like, oh, even if I get with a woman and then what if she wants to have sex and what if it's not big enough and it's not pleasurable for her? What if I am not able to perform for her? And just all this fear and anxiety would just keep racking me and has continued to do so for like several years. And I guess with fear and anxiety or whatever you want to call it, we have two choices. We can remain the same and keep doing what we are doing, or we can choose to change and, in this example, face the fears. And that's where the growth is in our discomfort. And fear is a very hard and difficult thing to tackle because everyone's, I think everyone's kind of fearful of different kind of things. You know, everyone avoids some sort of things and they stick to what their strengths are. And that's good to some extent, you know, we all have our strengths and we should utilize them to our fullest. But also, you know, you're only as strong as your weakest link. And, you know, I, I've spent a lot of time alone and very sad because I was unable to connect to other people, even though I wanted to, even though there was a part of me that still yearned for a relationship, that still yearned for love. I wasn't able to get out and do that. And because of that, you know, there was just a missing, there's just been this big missing gap in my life because of that. And that's not really a way that I want to live. And of course, these things are very hard to overcome. They take time and you have to expose yourself to it and gradually build up rather than trying to take it all head on and then facing another um, difficulty or adversity that makes you feel even worse about yourself and then you run away from it completely, which is what a lot of people do because, you know, everything's kind of dramatized and it's all or nothing, but just go out and do it. Just go out and talk to people. If you're scared about talking to people, just go out and, you know, get out of your comfort zone just a little bit and, you know, your life will become a bit better. And a quote that I really love about fear is that only the coward is capable of the most heroic act because courage is overcoming your fear. It's not, it's not a confident guy that feels safe in himself going up talking to a girl and then, you know, hitting things off and that sort of thing. Cause that for, for that guy, that's easy. That doesn't take any confidence or courage. That's not some sort of heroic act. But the person that is scared of something and they do it anyway, you know, the person that's scared of heights, but they learn to climb trees and become an arborist or they learn to cliff climb or rock climb or whatever to overcome their fear or the person like me that's scared of the dark, exposes themselves to the dark and then becomes used to it or is scared of social situations, then goes out into them and becomes better at them. You know, that's acts of heroism and that's acts of courage. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.